Hey everybody, happy Sunday, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers that are out there. It is 7.30 and so it's time for another Bible Bedtime Stories. Tonight we're reading from the Laugh and Learn Bible for Kids. And we're going to be reading a story about the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The kingdom of God belongs to them. Jesus was standing on a hill, and a huge crowd had gathered to hear him talk. Blessed are those who are sad. They will be comforted. Jesus was making a list, but it wasn't a kind of list that anyone had ever heard before. Blessed are those who don't put themselves first, for they will receive the whole world. Jesus was listing people who didn't have much, people who were sad, people who didn't use their own strength to get their own way, people who tried to make peace when others were fighting and probably got punched right in the jaw because of it. Jesus was listing people who usually ended up at the back of the line. Not anymore, he said. In the kingdom of God, you will be the happiest of them all. Oh, that sounds like a big deal. Jesus was talking about God's kingdom, where God is in control, and it sounded like an upside-down world. If you've been sad, you'll be happy. If you've been last, you'll be first. If you've tried to make peace, you will be the sons and daughters of the king of peace, the sons and daughters of God himself. The people around Jesus couldn't believe what they were hearing. The least important people in the kingdom of earth will be the most important people in the kingdom of God. Remember how the angels brought the message of Jesus' birth, not to the kings and the rich people, but to shepherds. Remember how Jesus was born, not in a palace, but in a stable. Yep, God's kingdom is totally different from the kingdoms of this earth. But Jesus wasn't finished. The law of Moses says not to kill people, he said. But I say, hating someone in your heart is just as bad. What? Hating someone is as bad as killing them? The law said people who hurt you should be punished. But I say, if someone hits you on the cheek, let them hit your other cheek too. If someone steals your shirt, give them your coat as well. What? Give my coat to someone who steals my shirt? The law says to love your neighbors. But I say, you should love your enemies just as much. People got really confused. This guy is crazy, they said to each other. But Jesus wasn't crazy. Jesus was teaching them about a whole new way to live, a forever kind of life lived with God. You see, the old rules of Moses could only change what you did on the outside. They couldn't change the inside. <coughs> I didn't come to make you do better things, Jesus said. I came to make you different people. I came to make you the kind of person that I am. And that kind of person doesn't need all those rules. That kind of person has a new heart, a heart that loves everyone, a heart that gives to everyone, a heart that puts people first, always. A heart like Jesus' heart. Come to me, all you who are tired, worn out, and weighed down by the rules. I'm not here to make you follow the rules. I'm here to make you a new person. 
Standing on the hill that day, preaching his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus invited everyone to a new kind of life. A life that was about a relationship with Jesus, one that can change us from the inside out. I want you to think about that for a second. I want you to think about the kind of life that Jesus calls us to live. It's a life that's completely different from what the world says about us. And as a church, one of the things that we've been doing is we've been using the phrase lives for Jesus. And we've been talking about the way that we can live our lives for Jesus. And that's kind of what this story was about. Jesus wants us to be a different person because we know who he is and we have a relationship with us, with him. He wants us to love other people and to put them first. He wants us to think about others before we think about ourselves, And he wants our heart to be like his heart. I don't know if you had a chance to write a note or draw a picture for a teacher or for somebody who's had an impact on your life. Um, but if you haven't, take some time to do that this week. We're also going to be at the end of the week issuing a new challenge. So make sure you listen to another way that you can live your lives for Jesus. The other thing that I need to remind you is don't forget about our garden walk that is coming up next Saturday. So make sure you print those pictures of your flowers off, color them and put them in your windows. And moms and dads, make sure you email me and let me know that your house will be on the list for our garden walk. Then next Saturday, hopefully the weather will be nice and you and your family can go and you can see how many flowers you can count on the garden walk. And I have some cool prizes for the winners of that event. So if you are interested in participating either by coloring flowers and putting them in your windows or if you want to go hunt for flowers, let me know. I think that's really the only announcement that I have for tonight. Um, so it's time for us to pray. Would you fold your hands and pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for today and for our amazing mothers. Help us to remember how important our mom is in our life in our faith and in our everyday world. Help us to share how much we love her, not just today, but every day of the year. Jesus, we love you, and in your name we pray, amen. Again, happy Mother's Day, moms. I hope you had a great day with your family. I hope your kids did something amazing for you today. Um, have a great night, and I will see you back again tomorrow night at 7.30 with another Bible bedtime story. Have a great night, everybody.